Hey everyone. So it's day eight, June tenth or July tenth, and I guess this one is going to be about knowledge, um, or I guess maybe another way of saying it is a lack of knowledge. So uh, two incidents happened today that I want to talk about because they. Um, we're both kind of very telling uh, in terms of what I knew or what was known and what was not known and the impact of that. So this morning, um, I've been having a very difficult time sleeping lately, just very difficult time sleeping. And I really didn't get any sleep last night. And right before it was time for the boys to get up for school, probably about an hour before, I decided that I was going to try and meditate so that, you know, even if, even though I was tired, you know, hopefully I'd at least be centered enough to, you know, get them through the day and, you know, hopefully get me through my day. And I was about, um, 20 minutes into my meditation and I can hear that the boys are up and they're downstairs and playing and all of a sudden I hear that telltale whine that something happened that one of them didn't like and I can hear the footsteps coming up the stairs and I already know uh, I'm getting ready to hear about it somebody did something to someone and my son comes in and he tells me that his brother threw something at him. And I know how they play. They don't often throw things directly at each other. It's exceptionally rare, actually. Um, so I asked, you know, was it intentional? And he said, yes. And I said, how do you know? He said, well, he threw it right at my chest. And I said, well, was he swinging his arms around and maybe he just you know, lost his grip or dropped it? said, no, he, deri he deliberately threw it at me like it was a baseball. And I said, okay. So I called his brother up. And at this point, I'm still, you know, kind of coming to from my meditative state. So this is probably as close to yogi as I get. And his brother comes up and I asked him what happened. He said, yes, he did throw the thing at him. And I said, why did you do that? And he said, well, he took it from me. I went, oh. So you had it in your possession. He took it from you. You took it back. Then what happened? He said, well, then he started whining that he wanted it back, so I threw it at him. Oh. Okay. And so I look at the son that came to me first. And said, why didn't you tell me that you took this from your brother and that's what started all of this? Now, this is not new. Uh, this is something he's had a habit of doing. Uh, he's very quick to tell on what other people have done, very slow to report on what he did to contribute to the situation or in some cases start the situation. And he comes back. And I asked him, I said, did you take the object from your brother? Now, mind you, they're standing right next to each other, less than a foot apart. And both of them are standing within a couple feet of me sitting up in my bed. And he goes, no, he gave it to me. And I just looked at him like, really? Really, dude? And he comes back and goes, no, I took it. And I had to tell him, I said, you know, I was on your side. I was actually on your side, even with the whole take and take back, you know, the point of throwing it at you was a step too far. Until you started telling me a lie about your brother in front of him and in front of me for no good reason. You already knew you were caught. 
and you still tried to tell me a lie. So I'm going to chalk this up to no harm, no foul. Go on, get ready for school and leave it alone. And I thought about that after I had dropped them off at school and just went. I don't know whether the approach that I took was fair to them, but I've tried to tell them that among the many things that they can do, lying is definitely up there, you know, among the worst. And it's one of those things you can never take back. Once you have destroyed your credibility, once you've destroyed your word, you can't get that back easily, if at all. I know that one from personal experience. Um, and so I'm trying to keep them from going down that road, but he is very slow to pick that up, um, which is unfortunate, but we're going to keep trying. Um, but it is interesting to me how that simple act of telling a blatant lie um, completely changed how I viewed the situation and completely changed whether or not I thought that there really was one more wrong than the other. So the second situation was I talked briefly um, with my ex about um, how things were going. Uh, she knew that today was the first day of kindergarten, uh, sorry, first day of first grade for my boys. And so she asked how they were doing. Um, and we talked briefly. Um, and I happened to ask her how her plans were for uh, moving on. And she said they were going great. She had made plans for this. She was going to take a trip out there in a couple weeks. Uh, she had planned for a week in August, and it sounded like everything is just moving full steam ahead. Full steam. Now, just for some background, um, the, her decision to go on was not a surprise. Um, it wasn't forthcoming, but it wasn't a surprise. She had uh, mentioned it more than a couple times. Um, and had really struggled with the idea of staying here versus going because she felt like she needed to go. But the part that was disappointing in all of it was the setup for her to make that decision was obvious. Uh, she had just gone down to take a trip and visit some friends uh, only for a weekend. And then all of a sudden, after that trip, she's hiding, not saying anything for about a week and a half. And then I get a text message. After we had already had plans for later that week to go to a show, I get a text message saying, I've made the decision, I'm moving. And that's it. And while I, like I said, the, the decision for her to move on was not surprising. It wasn't something that you couldn't see coming. Uh, you knew it was coming. Um, it was just very disappointing that at the point where she's making the final consideration that, you know, I was not a part of, you know, her consideration. Um, and I had told her at various times that, you know, it felt like that's what she needed to do. But the fact that it was um, something that she just had to make the decision on herself. And then I was informed by text message. Um, it just felt very... Um, omitted felt like whereas once I held a uh, position of confidant a friend of companion and even once upon a time lover um, clearly I was none of the above in that decision making process and it comes across as that was deliberate um, 
And that, I think, is the part that hurt the most. Um, I'm sure she had her reasons for why it needed to happen that way, but that was the part that really felt like it hurt the most. That it was just, uh, okay, well, I need to shut you out, make my decision, and then I'll just text it to you. That's it. Too bad, so sad. Bye-bye. And I found that in these two examples, I found the two things that really just irk me and are two things that I don't think I can or am willing to tolerate going forward, which is blatant lying, you know, just outright lies. Um, and omissions. You know, people think lying is something you do forthright. You have to tell somebody something that's not true. But I think omissions in many cases are just as dangerous, just as hurtful, and just as deadly as outright lying is. Because to whatever degree you know, there's information that somebody else wants to know, needs to know, would like to know, or would like to be a part of. And if you're intentionally keeping them out, if you're intentionally uh, pushing them from that discussion, that decision, that whatever, it's it says more than words ever could in terms of what that person is in your life. Uh, who they are to you and what you felt you needed to do in order to make your move. So I think in both of these instances, I got a very telling um, showing of where that level of trust, where that level of respect, um, where that level of intimacy is or isn't and it hurts it sucks it's something I hope I don't do to people well, it's something I hope I won't do to people but I think I'm going to go with Maya Angelou's line on this one when somebody shows you who they really are believe them all right, well, that sums up the day. Uh, like I say, as always, I don't have the answers. I'm just asking the questions. So the journey continues, and hopefully bigger and better things to come. Take care.